digits, the power line on fire. Firefighters rushed to the hospital and the flooding, the major bridge that gave way, the driver teetering. Outrage tonight and calls for an apology. Do American veterans deserve one? After what Donald Trump said about John McCain. He's not a war hero. Also tonight, the family demanding release the other video. What else happened in those moments after a woman is pulled over, failing to signal changing lanes, later found dead in her jail cell? The historic moment, 54 years later, the Cuban flag flying in the U.S. again. Tonight, I'll take you inside the Cuban embassy. And the man fighting off a shark on live TV, the audience could see the shark before he did, punching the shark his own family watching at home. From ABC News World Headquarters, this is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Monday night. And much of this country sweltering this evening, and for many, it is about to get worse. Here in the Northeast, the blackout inside this major hospital blamed on the heat tonight. The power line in flames elsewhere. The extremes on the other side of the country, in the West I-10 in California, a major bridge giving way after torrential downpours weaken the bridge. A 30-foot section completely gone there. And this car dangling the driver safe in it all. The forecast, 70 million from Oklahoma City to New York City in the 90s. Factor in the humidity and the heat index, well over 100. And this is hardly over tonight. ABC's Gio Benitez leading us off. Tonight, extreme heat bringing warnings all along the East Coast. It's an excessive heat warning. Extreme heat. The heat wave is ramping up. In New York City, transformer cables in flames as temps quickly approach 100 degrees. These hospital hallways dark after a transformer blew there. In Mount Vernon, New York, the heat is even too much for firefighters battling a smoky blaze. Six hospitalized from heat exhaustion. This kind of heat can be dangerous. People have to make smart decisions. In Philadelphia, the city has activated its emergency heat line. Nurses on hand to take calls as the temps get dangerously hot. The heat index is 99 degrees right now. So what does that mean for someone who's in a car, for example? In a car, it's dangerous. And also, just this is the area where a fan's not going to help you. Already this year, 10 children have died after being left in hot cars. That's why these Good Samaritans in Kansas busted open this car window to save a child who was accidentally left in the scorching heat. Tonight, the child is okay. The parents cited for child endangerment. And at emergency rooms like this one, doctors are reminding us that kids and the elderly are most at risk. So wear light and loose clothing, take some cool showers, and drink lots of water, David. Gio Benita is leading us off from Philly tonight. Gio, thank you. And as we showed you at the top of the broadcast, a driver lucky to be alive teetering over that bridge. In fact, we're told tonight 30 miles of bridges throughout the storm zone being inspected tonight, possibly weakened by the storms. In Moreno, California, streets turned into rivers. Incredible pictures. And in Wickenburg, Arizona, that is a pool right there in the backyard surrounded by the rushing waters. ABC's Matt Gutman takes us to that part of I-10 that simply gave way. Torrential rains and flash floods swamping the drought-ridden southwest. The street is flooding. In Arizona, battering storms. Up to four inches of rain near Phoenix. There goes one track in. Storms bending power lines. Los Angeles and San Diego breaking their all-time July rainfall records. In California, nearly seven inches of rain in just a few hours washing away that bridge. The main conduit between Los Angeles and Phoenix wiped away. This pickup truck careening into the watery chasm. Its driver, injured, was plucked to safety. That water rushed through here with so much force it gouged out the riverbank, separating the highway from the bridge. 27,000 cars a day use this road. Tonight, drivers forced to detour over 100 miles. Engineers and helicopters like that are surveying every single bridge along a 30-mile span of this highway, so the next flash flood doesn't cause a bridge to look like that. Now, it could be weeks, maybe even months, before this road 
is operating again. David. Just an incredible scene behind you, Matt Gutman. Our thanks to you as well. We are following the situation in the West and, of course, the heat from the Midwest all the way to the East, and that's where Ginger starts. Right. Climatologically, this is the hottest time of year, but that doesn't mean it's not dangerous, David, and that's why we have heat advisories in effect from Oklahoma City through Montgomery, Alabama, all the way up to Philadelphia. They've even got an excessive heat warning. Florence, South Carolina, in an excessive heat warning, and you can see why. You add that level of moisture to the heat, and it's going to feel like these heat indices. 107 Tallahassee tomorrow, Little Rock 100. Quick look at those remnants of Dolores. You just saw Matt standing there. The rain not done yet. Flash flood watches through tomorrow for parts of Nevada up through the Sierra, almost to L.A. And as Matt said, inspecting those bridges tonight. Ginger, thank you. Now to the race for 2016 and growing outrage this evening. Do some American veterans deserve an apology? Republican Donald Trump and that war of words after his comments about Senator John McCain, the veteran and former prisoner of war. ABC's John Carl tonight with video of the moment and this evening John McCain saying, I don't need an apology, but other veterans do. It all started when Trump said this about John McCain. He's not a war hero. He's a war hero. He's a war hero because he was captured. I like people that weren't captured. The remark struck most as outrageous. After all, McCain spent five and a half years as a POW in Vietnam, while Trump avoided the draft with multiple deferments and has boasted about leading a parade for veterans in 1995. Today, McCain is calling on Trump to apologize, not to him, but to all vets. What I think he should do is apologize to the families and those who have served. Top Republicans are hammering Trump. It's offensive, it's ridiculous. And, and I do think uh, it is a disqualifier as commander in chief. But Trump's not backing down. What could John McCain have done not to be captured? Well, I do say this, people that fought hard and weren't captured and went through a lot, they get no credit. Nobody even talks about them. They're like forgotten. The firestorm comes as Trump is riding high. Tonight's ABC News Washington Post poll has Donald Trump with the biggest lead by far of any Republican yet. The big question is what this controversy will do to Trump's standing. Most of the poll, David, was taken before those comments by Trump about John McCain. We'll be watching it closely in the coming days. John Carl live at the White House. John, thanks. Tonight, ABC News is learning new details after those Marines were shot and killed in Tennessee. The suspected gunman, once a star athlete, well-liked by his friends, authorities say seemingly transformed after seven months in Jordan. Tonight, Brian Ross has learned what FBI agents have begun to discover on his phone in his diary. Is it a possible motive? After four lives were taken over the weekend, we learned a fifth victim, a sailor, dying from his wounds. ABC's chief investigative correspondent Brian Ross tonight on what they have found in the phone. U.S. officials tonight tell ABC News they believe Mohammed Abdulaziz carried out his attacks in the apparent hope Allah would forgive his sins on earth, including drug abuse and financial failure. It is the first indication that Abdulaziz's deadly attacks on two U.S. military sites last week were motivated by an extremist Islamic sense of jihad. Officials say an examination of Abdulaziz's smartphone turned up no links to ISIS, but did reveal he searched a number of jihadist websites prior to his deadly rampage, hoping to get religious justification to wipe the slate clean of his personal failures. And there were many. His family has told the FBI that Abdulaziz, seen in these new photos provided to ABC News, was mentally ill, abusing drugs, unable to hold a job, facing bankruptcy, and fearful of an upcoming court appearance for drunk driving. In his diary, recovered by the FBI, Abdulaziz wrote about committing suicide and becoming a martyr after he was fired from a job in 2013. In a phone call two days before the attack, the family says Abdulaziz called his sister to tell her of the shame he felt as a devout Muslim over his arrest for drunk driving and his dread of the pending court appearance. Tonight, the family believes that may well have been the trigger, David, for what happened. All right, Brian Ross tonight. Brian, thank you. Now to that case making national headlines. The young woman discovered dead in her Texas jail cell. Authorities say it was suicide. Tonight, her family ordering a private autopsy. Her death coming just three days after being pulled over for a routine traffic stop. The video showing what appears to be some sort of altercation there as tonight, there are growing calls for other video from those same moments never before seen in public to be released. And here's ABC's Ryan Smith. This cell phone video sparking outrage. 
capturing the only view of Sandra Bland's arrest until now. Tonight, Bland's family speaking out about that dash cam video, also showing the arrest. And according to the Bland family's lawyer, this dash cam video indicates an officer said Bland would get a warning, yet asked her to get out of the car. I've seen the dash cam video. It really calls into question why it is for a routine traffic stop. She was asked to even get out of her car. Sandra's arrest, police say, happened after she kicked an officer. But in the cell phone video, she claims they roughed her up. What traffic signal? Slam me into the ground and everything. The 28-year-old Bland found hanged to death with a trash bag in her cell three days after that arrest. Now the Bland family starting their own investigation and conducting an independent autopsy. This could have easily been anybody's neighbor, anybody's friend. Tonight, community leaders expressed outrage over the case, suspecting foul play, but those private autopsy results are expected in the next 24 to 48 hours, along with that new dash cam video's release. All right, Brian, thank you. Now to that bombshell revelation in the Bill Cosby case. Dramatic new details from a deposition secret until now. The comedian explaining in chilling detail how he allegedly seduced young women using drugs, asking about their personal lives, their families, to apparently gain their trust. Here tonight, ABC's Lindsay Davis. Tonight, Bill Cosby's legal team is fighting back against the release of a thousand page deposition where Cosby spoke openly about how he used drugs and fame to seduce women. Cosby described sexual encounters with at least five women, even asking one of the alleged victims questions about her father's death from cancer to get close to her. The lawyer asking, did you ask her those questions because you wanted to have sexual contact with her? Cosby answers, yes. The deposition was part of a 2005 lawsuit filed by Andrea Constant, who claimed Cosby sexually assaulted her. But Cosby says the relationship was consensual, even describing a romantic dinner by the fireplace complete with cognac. Cosby doesn't deny serial philandering. As for the quaaludes, he says some women willingly took them. When asked whether a different woman from Constant was in a position to give consent to sex after he gave her quaaludes in 1976, Cosby said, I don't know. Never charged with sexual assault, Cosby settled the Constant case out of court. More than two dozen women have accused Cosby of assaulting and or drugging them, something he's always denied. A source close to Cosby saying he settled to avoid embarrassment. And today, one of Cosby's lawyers telling the Philadelphia Inquirer the release of that deposition was a violation of the confidentiality agreement, something he says they will deal with very vigorously. David. Lindsay Davis, thank you. We are just back from Washington tonight where history was made today. After more than five decades, the Cuban flag is flying in our nation's capital again. Tonight, I take you inside the Cuban embassy where we asked, will President Raul Castro come to the U.S.? And will President Obama be welcomed in Cuba? Just inside the gate at the Cuban embassy in Washington today, the first thing we notice, the empty flagpole. 54 years have gone by, no flag. A crush of cameras across the street, more than five decades since the U.S. cut off ties with Fidel Castro's Cuba. The era of Americans vacationing, gambling. The Monte Carlo of the Americas. Just 90 miles off the coast of Florida, long ago silenced. Today, a new chapter. The Cuban flag flying again. The curtain removed from the plaque now reading the Cuban embassy again. And the foreign minister who works with President Raul Castro sitting down with us. Did you ever think that this day would come? Uh, certainly, certainly. You did? I, I, I was always sure that this day uh, uh, happens, but uh, I didn't know when. Our trip to Cuba just this year, the average family there making under $30 a month. Dennis? No. The children hadn't seen an iPhone before. They tell me they want to see the United States. While back in Washington today, at the top of the stairs, we find the same Cuban flag taken down all those years ago. This flag was saved as a premonition that this day would come. Absolutely. More than a premonition. And the day has come. Yes, sir. But there are major hurdles ahead. The economic embargo still in place. Congress must approve lifting it. Already American cruise lines getting ready, airlines ready too. And tonight, the line outside the American embassy in Havana growing. And we ask if Fidel Castro's brother, Raul, who is now president, will make the trip to the U.S. Do you think that your current president, President Castro, will come visit the United States? Uh, I, I'm sure, but I, I don't know when. And President Obama? visiting well, Cuba. Let me say that President Obama will be really welcome in Havana City. 
Cuba's foreign minister sitting down with us today. The Cuban embassy reopened in Washington. We move on with other news tonight into that eye-opening new message this evening, targeting distracted drivers, a new campaign warning of the dangers of using your phone while behind the wheel and not just to talk or text. In fact, ABC's David Curley...